Hello everyone! In this video I will be showing you how I level my alternate characters in The Elder Scrolls Online. Please note that this guide is not recommended for new players, it's for players who already have CP enabled characters and are already familiar with the game. My method is not the fastest or more optimized, for example you can level a character in a few hours by using Master Ritz, but I like it because it incorporates a little bit of everything and levels a lot of skill lines at once. The things you will need before you start are Training gear I make one 5-piece set and one 3-piece set for every 10 levels. The reason I make only 3 pieces of the second set is because I don't want to craft jewellery because it's very expensive. I just use drop jewels. But if you have materials you can craft a full second set. For magic aspects, Julianos and Seducers is a nice combination and so is Handing's and Nightmother's Gaze for stamina specs anything that offers sustain works because as a lobby it's your biggest problem. Make sure to craft the pieces in all three different weights so you can level heavy, light and medium armor simultaneously. One thing to note when crafting your training gear is that you want to also craft your backbar weapon as well as any weapons your character will be using when it's leveled. So for example if you plan to make that character a healer then craft a restoration staff so they can start leveling the restoration staff skills. If you plan to make that character a stamina DPS, then craft daggers, bow and a two-handed weapon and so on. The second thing you will need is food and potions. I like recipes that scale to one's level, like Dubious Cameron Throne and Witch Mother's Pot and Brew, because they offer region as well. You can also use the food sold for Alliance Poise at Siege Masters. As for potions, I use Alliance Potions or the tripods from the daily login rewards. Final thing you will need to have before you start is experience scrolls or experience drinks. Daily login rewards award a lot of scrolls that give 50% extra experience, but I prefer to use 100% or 150% drinks or scrolls if I have them. You can craft these yourself if you have the recipes or buy them from traders. Level 1 to 10 I deposit all the training gear and consumables in the bank so my new character can have access to them as soon as it's created. I usually don't skip the tutorial because it gives skill points and it's a good opportunity to start leveling weapon skill lines right away. Just remember to take turns and equip all the weapons that you have so that their respective skill lines will start leveling. Then, even if for example you have an inferno equipped, you can slot a rest of staff skill on your bar and level it passively. I make sure to have three skills from the three class lines, then one skill from my front bar weapon and one skill from my back bar weapon. For example, on a night blade I would slot assassin's blade, veiled strike and strife, then a dual wield skill and a bow skill if that character was to become a stamina night blade. After the tutorial is finished, I travel to my character's aligned starter city, so Vocal Guard for AD, Davon's Watch for EP, and Glenumbra for DC. As soon as you port to the city, the hooded figure NPC will approach you to start the main quest. I accept the quest because when I level my characters I like to do the main quest until the story takes you to the island of Sturk, it's a great source of skill points and also levels the soul magic skill line. In the starter city I do the following. Feed my horse. Join the Mages Guild in the Mages Guild Hall, the Fighters Guild in the Fighters Guild Hall, and the Undaunted Guild in the Inn. I also like to do crafting certification while I'm there as well. Then, depending on the character, I travel to Somerset to start the Sigic line as well and jewelry crafting certification. I only do the Somerset quest up to the point where I discover Artaeum and Law Master Calories offers the Sigic quest. This is optional though and you can start the Sigic skill line after your character is leveled. Then I start the main quest and if I have 150% experience scroll going then I'm usually at level 10 after I escape from Cold Harbor. Level 10 to 20 When I reach level 10 I like to go to Cyrodiil if that character will need to use skills from the Assault or Support skill lines. You can also do battle grants to level these lines because having a slow horse in Cyrodiil is not fun. But in Cyrodiil you can also do the Welcome to Cyrodiil quest and gain two skill points in the process. Please note that you can skip the siege training for the Welcome to Cyrodiil quest and still get the points. There is a PvP event going on right now, the Meteor Mayhem, which gives 100% buff to AP gained. It's very easy to gain AP. I got caught traps in a little over an hour with a brand new character. After you leave Cyrodiil, you can do a couple of the main quests in order to reach level 15, which is when I like to start doing random normal dungeons. This is because at level 15 you can unlock weapon swapping, so you will be more effective in a dungeon. And plus, you can get the experience at the end of the dungeon on your front bar, 
and then submit the dungeon quest and get the experience of that on your back bar, thus leveling more skill lines during one dungeon run. I do a couple of random normals until I reach level 20. One of the dungeons will always be one that the Undaunted send you to investigate, so remember to go back to the inn to submit the quest and get initiated. You get inspiration towards the Undaunted skill line regardless though. If the dungeon happens to have Daedra mobs, then your Fighter's Guild skill line is also getting leveled. Interlude, Aetherian Archive Once every 10 levels I visit Aetherian Archive in order to read all the books there. Reading books is a great way of passively leveling skill lines. I find that it's more effective in lower levels and I get less from it in higher levels, but it's a very quick process and worth doing. Also make sure to read the books in major guild halls, and if you're doing the Somerset part of the city quest, to read the books inside the monastery in Shimmerin. Levels 20 to 50. If I'm not in a hurry to level my character, then it takes me three days with a couple of hours each day to level from 20 to 50. This is because I can do a random normal dungeon each day and get the XP associated with it. With 150% experience string, this goes a long way and also levels my undaunted line. Along with the dungeons, I do the main quest and a little bit of the following activities until I reach the next training gear level. Alligir Dolmens, Public Dungeons and Skyridge if I have a friend who can help. I like doing random dungeons in particular because I like group PvE content and usually by the time I'm near level 50, my undaunted line is halfway completed. When a character reaches level 43, we get skill redistribution scrolls. Before I use this, I go and level Alchemy. Alchemy needs 7 skill points, but I only want to level it to get the medicinal use passive and not to do max level reads for instance. So using the respect scroll afterwards will give me those points back and I can put some of them on medicinal use. Level 50 and beyond. When my character is finally CP enabled is when the real grind starts, because a lot of skill lines will not be fully leveled. In the case of the major skill, it means I will have to go around collecting law books. This is a good opportunity to get sky shards as well. In the case of the Fighters Guild, I like to do Skyridge Catacomb runs. One full circuit solo takes less than 15 minutes and awards around 300 points into the Fighters Guild line. You can also do Dolmens as well to level the Fighters Guild. Undaunted is easier because getting achievements in Vet Dungeon runs levels the line fast. I also like to do the This One's On Me achievement where you have to buy the Undaunted members a drink in each city. Finally, the Sijic skill line takes around 2.5 to 3 hours from start to finish. There's add-ons and online guides that mark all the Sijic rift spots on the map. This is how I level my alternate characters. I hope you found something helpful in this guide or gotten some ideas for your own leveling. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.